I check these boxes. Now I am legally a, a, a freight broker. I'm going, I'm patting myself on the back, off to the races, and then it's like, damn, what next? How do you even build relationships? And I'm trying to get my lingo right. I think I just got it wrong earlier. No, you're how do I build relationships with these shippers? How do I, how do I get contracts? So what we recommend is going in person. We understand that COVID, you know, has changed the way of life. Um, we recommend going in person. I feel like there you can kind of really see, you know, like what vibe are you giving off with one another? We always say go in person if you can. Um, cold calling works, um, sending emails. I mean, there's so many. And Tristan will tell you, like, I'll see somebody with a, a company jacket on from a shipper and I'll walk up to them. Hey, you work there? You know, I mean, you never know. They could be the shipping manager. I was at a Christmas party one time and I met the compliance manager for Kroger's. That's how they became one of my customers. Um, but building relationships, like I said, is, is going to the shipper, introducing yourself, and then just basically letting them know that you're different from any other freight broker, whatever that is. You know, if you have a team, if you have a staff, um, if you work with other shippers before, you can use them as a reference. For us, we can always say that we're carriers first, you know, because we were. I mean, we had our trucking company first. So I'm, so every transaction, every load that I move, I put myself in that carrier shoes. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably your best way is to be honest, be transparent, and going in person. Okay. Before when, I move to you, can. Tristan, before I move to you, Tristan, um, Sam, you just said it's always better to go in person. Okay, I'm going in person. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to the front desk person? Am I talking, like, who am I even asking for? Who's the decision makers? That's a good question. So um, we tell people, it's usually like your shipping manager, um, logistics manager. We have LinkedIn. We have Google. I mean, the internet is dangerous. You can get in there right away and ask, you know, go straight, straight in. Hey, can I speak to Sean? You know, something like that by first name. Um, sometimes it is a little harder to go in person, but usually if you have a name, like me and Tristan always tells our class, if you get past the gatekeeper, usually, um, or if you work your way to the top, hey, I was supposed to call Sean later today, can I be transferred through? Knowing, knowing that going well, Sean doesn't even know me, but I was able to pull that name and usually that gets you in the door. Um, so like I said, shipping manager, um, logistics manager, just any, anyone really in shipping that is over that type of, that over the type of processing of moving the, that commodity. Got you. Tristan, I mean, this is just, you guys said it was so easy to get in. I got to believe that everybody feels that I can go in, in a few weeks from now, I'm an actual licensed freight broker. Is there room in the industry? Is, is there space? Is the industry large enough for all of the different people who, you know, because it's no real requirements to, to get in, I got to believe that it's an oversaturated industry. No? There, there is no room unless you're a fair broker. So any and everybody should not just go out and be a broker. See, the reason why I want people to be brokers is if they have um, some sort of compassion for a trucker. You know, like you got to understand what they go through. You have to understand they're away from their family. They're out on the road. They're on long hours. You know, they don't get to see their family for weeks at a time. So my thing is, there's room, but there's not room just for anybody. You know, a lot of people want to be brokers because they hear that you can work from home. Mm -hmm. um, you can set your own hours. You can literally get one customer and make six figures. All of that is absolutely true. But the difference in Sam and I Again, we're carriers first. We know, I don't have a CDL, but I have driven a truck. I've been over the road with my drivers. I mean, we spend lots of money on insurance and maintenance. So yes, there's lots and lots of rooms. Why? Because shippers are, you know, businesses start every day, right? So there's lots and lots of companies that have freight to be moved. But we see that there's a lot of people in the industry, they're all only about the money. And if you're going to have that type of attitude, then now this space is definitely not for you because we, we truly believe in treating the carrier fairly. And I mean, in our training course, Sean, we literally called a shipper. OK, and we told this shipper like we, we introduced ourselves. We asked for a meeting. 
even during COVID-19, and we have this on video. We did a whole video shoot with this shipper. He didn't know what we were going to say. He, he accepted the meeting, and Sam and I went in there, and we got that shipper. So we actually show people how to do this. But you know why he agreed to do business with us? We told him that we're available 24 hours of the day, and we are. Rather it's me or her or someone on our team, that customer can always get in touch with us if there's a problem. When my customer calls and says he needs a truck at 3 o'clock in the morning and it's snowing in Pennsylvania, I still get him a truck. So to answer your question again, yes, there's plenty of room in the industry, but it's not for any and everybody. Even though it's easy to start a brokerage, it's, this is not for any and everybody. Great answer. Talk to me. What are the costs associated with becoming a broker? And do I need, both of you have trucks. I know one of you mentioned you have five trucks. I don't, I, I don't recall what the other one of you mentioned. We both have five. We both no. have five trucks. Okay, no, beautiful. Five. You both have five trucks. If I'm getting in the game, do I need to incur those expenses? Is there a reason that you, obviously I know a little bit about your backstory, so I know you both started off as carriers in, on that part of the game. But what are some of the costs that are associated with becoming a successful broker? So to actually start the brokerage, you can do that for less than $5,000. That, that startup cost is less than five grand. I mean, you're looking at $300 for your authority. Your surety bond is going to be based on your personal credit. So that's another thing that we teach in our course. Don't go applying for an authority. You know, you need to make sure that your credit is on point, your credit worthy. So that is going to determine the cost of your surety bond. Someone with excellent credit, you can get a surety bond for $1,000. So on top of that, you have your BOC3, which is about 50 bucks, 50 to 100 bucks, depending on who you, who you go with. Um, and then you have, so I said surety bond already, which like I said, someone with great credit, maybe around $1,000. Someone with not so good credit, um, about $3,000, and that's for the year. So you do renew that every year, but those initial startup costs, less than five grand. You don't need a truck at all to start a freight brokerage, and you have you don't have to have ever owned a truck. Got you. So, Sam, to you, why, why do you own five trucks? Why do you, what, what are the benefits of having your truck? I know you don't have to have or you don't have to own trucks to be a successful broker, what are the benefits of having these trucks? Well, Sean, I'm gonna speak because I think Sam might be taking a truck and call. This happens to us all the time. Okay. So please forgive us with that, but we, no we have trucks on the road right now. We get calls, it could be a breakdown, it could be something serious. Um, but I'll say this, so when I first got into trucking, like I said, that was for my father-in-law to drive, right? And so we'll talk about the issues later on, but we ended up stopping and then we had to start over. We did different areas of transportation. Um, my husband decided that he wanted to leave his job and, and drive trucks. So he drives what we call a hot shot. He, at this time, he no longer drives, but when he started, he was driving a dually with a trailer and that's what we call a hot shot setup. So it was more so because we have a disabled son. You know, I have a 12 year old disabled son and my husband and I knew that we wanted to be able to be the ones to care for our son, like me be at home, um, be his full time caretaker and not have to depend on anybody else. And him driving along with us having other trucks allowed us to do that. Um, I also say that I'm able to be a successful broker because me having those trucks, I understand what they go through. I understand what the carriers go through. I know the expenses. So when I'm out there fighting against a shipper, going back and forth with them for days on the cost of a particular lane, it's because I know what it really takes to move that truck. Like I am the broker that will ask the shipper, when was the last time you drove a truck? I mean, I'm just real straightforward with them. And I've been able to build and keep relationships because some of them have told me like I really haven't met anybody as outspoken as you and and I tell them like I know exactly what it takes so you you got to pay more money if you want to get this done um so you know when you ask again about the benefits of owning a truck I mean freight is always going to move so why not 
You know, we know the industry, that's multiple streams in this one particular industry for us. And for anybody else that's brokering or dispatching and they own trucks as well. I mean, freight is always going to move. Even if the economy is bad, if there's a natural disaster, what's the first thing FEMA's looking for is trucks to get those generators to these people that, you know, experience a hurricane or water and things like that. So for us, I just think it's because it's our passion. We've been doing it. And um, we actually care about carriers, you know, so. You speak again and again about the carriers. Can you give me an idea of what are some of the expenses that go into moving, you know, owning these trucks, moving this freight that you because ultimately I want to lead to how do you base your price? How do you, you know, for anybody who's watching this, they might be clueless as to, well, you know, I just want to get business. I'm going to go in as low as I can possibly go just to score the business. But listening to you, you're you're like, no, that is, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. It sounds like that's the wrong way to go in. That's absolutely the wrong way. Um, Carriers actually drive the market in the industry. You know, when, when they take those cheap, those very, very cheap loads, they're driving down the market for that particular lane and it's bad for everybody. So that's absolutely not the way that you want to do it. Um, I do speak so highly of carriers because I have a family full of truck drivers. It's important to me that they're being treated fairly. I mean, I love my father-in-law. So when I saw him constantly being gone, we barely got to see him being over the road and he was barely making any money. That's again, what got me into the industry. So I'm very passionate in that aspect. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.